We are racing through the summer and we're heading towards some really massive games to round out 2024 with, but there's lots of stuff to play these days. And I've been doing just that. I've been bouncing back and forth, trying a bunch of different titles, been streaming a lot actually on twitch.tv slash EPN. And I thought, you know what? Let's come back and talk a little bit about the games that I have been playing and I've been snacking on them. I haven't been sort of diving deep. None of these games is so massive that it's taken on all of my attention, but I have played quite a bit of each of these titles and I've got five for you for the Nintendo Switch. Let's talk about Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. This is from a company called Simogo. It's being published by Annapurna Interactive, and it's the same team that brought us and I are Wild Hearts, which is an amazing experience. And this one is very different. This is kind of an adventure game, and it evokes some of the stuff that you might see in a Resident Evil game. It's not like zombies and things, but there's a lot of puzzle solving. There's a lot of like trying to crack codes and figure out exactly what is happening, because you're getting all of these little morsels, these little tidbits of clues and information. You're going into this giant mansion and you're exploring it. There's secret entrances and lairs and books that you have to rifle through. There's posters that you have to kind of reform. And you're getting all of this visual stimulation and information that you can actually write down on a notepad or in your phone or something. Annapurna actually sent me a little Lorelei and the Laser Eyes notepad because this is one of those games. It's a brain teaser and I've struggled with some of the puzzles for sure when I was streaming it I was like help me and I had people on the stream actually help me get through a couple of the sequences but it's really cool it's kind of creepy it's it's definitely a modern take and I'm digging the aesthetics of everything sometimes it's a little difficult to understand exactly where you're going to go because all the colors have been drained out it's mostly black and white with some red little flourishes but it is a really freaking cool experience I'm digging this and what I played so far of Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, I would give an 8.52. Another game that I've been addicted to is Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble, and this is a jam-packed experience from Sega. They were pretty damn stoked about this thing coming together. They sent me this unbelievably cool little Super Monkey Ball gift package with a shirt and a passport and all kinds of really fun stuff. A little action figure, which I think is behind me right now. We've played this kind of experience before. There's tons of different sort of puzzle levels that you play in single-player mode, and then there's a robust collection of multiplayer mode in there you can race and you can battle and you can do all kinds of stuff and then there's also DLC that allows you to access a bunch of other Sega characters and I actually was addicted to the gameplay so I did purchase the DLC characters and just today as I'm recording this I got Knuckles, Tails and Amy to go alongside Sonic the Hedgehog but there are other Sega characters that are coming along for the ride with this game. And they've also tuned it a little bit. There were some visual hitches in the 60 frames per second mode, the single player mode, but it's all running very smooth. And it is kind of like a Souls-like in a way, because <laughs> you keep having these experiences where you're falling and you're falling and you're falling. And you're going, I'll try one more time, I'll try one more time. And there's a limit to how much of that abuse I can take. You know, sometimes the levels, like it starts off super easy. It's super fr family friendly and it sort of guides you into it and then pretty soon you're jumping over gaps and you're trying to twist and turn your character in the ball so it can navigate this maze, this death-defying maze, and the challenge ramps up considerably as you get deeper into the game, but it's very cool. And the multiplayer is super creative as well. This is an excellent game, quite honestly. It really honors the history and the success of Super Monkey Ball. We've been playing these Super Monkey Ball games forever, but this is one of the best ones and it's a great fit on the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Rocket Knight Adventures Resparked is another game I've been having a ton of fun with. This is from Limited Run Games. They went back into the Konami archives and took a look at this really cool 16-bit action adventure, this great character with really cool bosses, lots of interesting pig-like enemies to battle, and lots of really tough stages to get through and they said you know what let's dust this off a little bit let's add in some extra museum bits so you get all the box art you get posters and advertisements and stuff and let's do a brand new intro animation and really celebrate this rocket knight creation so you get the genesis game you get the super nintendo game and the japanese super famicom game all three games are really cool i'm partial to the sega genesis game that was the first rocket knight title that i got addicted to and actually our friend Blair Farrell sent me a Genesis cartridge and 
And it's so rad to have the original cartridge, but also it's really freaking cool to be able to play this collection on the Nintendo Switch. It's a great fit. Thankfully, they have a rewind function so you can rewind the gameplay when it gets a little bit too hairy and challenging because this is one of those titles where it's about memorization and it's skill, but there's also a lot of luck because sometimes <laughs> bullets are flying all over the screen or bad guys are popping up everywhere or platforms disappear, but it's so inventive and so cool. And I honestly think that if it was a little bit easier, it would have been as successful as some of the other mascot action adventure games out there. Because you can see it borrows a little bit from the Contra stages, but also from Sonic the Hedgehog. I think there was a lot of influence in here. And Konami, who is a master at making excellent 2D scrolling action adventure titles, said we can get into this cutesy action platformer thing as well but these games are difficult still this is a terrific collection i'm going to give rocket knight adventures resparked an 8 out of 10. Nintendo also sent me a perfect game to snack on. It's one of those games that you keep going back to. It's Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. And this is a game that challenges you with little micro moments from a series of Nintendo classic cartridges. So Balloon Fight is in there. Of course, Mario Experiences and Zelda and Metroid and Kid Icarus and Kirby. All of these great games that really define the kind of 80s and 90s era of video gaming and really helped to lay a language for how we got to understand video games again after the crash and it's really wonderful to have them celebrated like this you get little moments and challenges where you're trying to get you know a mushroom as quickly as possible or defeat a boss as quickly as possible or get samus's ball form in metroid or something like that all of these things where you're racing against the clock trying to get the best time possible for each of these experiences and then of course yes you can jump into the championship mode, which pits your time against the world stage. That's where the addiction comes in because you can play each of these weekly challenges over and over and over again until you're into the S tier category and you start rising in the rankings. And easier said than done, there's a lot of incredible players out there. And some of these games are, again, incredibly challenging out of the 80s. They really made you think quickly and deal with things super quickly. I do wish that there was a little bit more kind of making of kind of stuff, a little, I don't know, it would have been nice to have some video vignettes maybe from the classic Nintendo World Championships shows that were made, a little bit more history around why this is here. And I know that there's a really cool collector's edition with this game to kind of celebrate all of that stuff, but I just wish there was a little bit more in there. And also it would have been fun to, you, there's multiplayer modes where you're kind of racing against ghosts and stuff. It would have been fun to just have more online in real time kind of modes with this title but still this is a terrific celebration the fact that it is uh, an nes edition really makes you think that there probably will be a super nes edition I'm looking forward to that as well i do think that this is a successful game i don't know if it's for everybody i do feel like it's for the diehard nintendo fanatics out there people that have some familiarity with this and i think nintendo probably could have bridged that gap if they put a little bit more detail i mean they have some paragraphs about why and what this collection is but it would have been great to kind of show off the celebration, you know, the reason why this was all done, and also to launch something new around this, to make a new streaming show or something on Nintendo's YouTube channel or something like that. Maybe that's in the works, but it feels like a great celebration, but also very targeted for a specific audience out there. I'm going to give Nintendo World Championships NES Edition a 7.5 out of 10. And the other game that I've been playing, it's a little bit of a cheat because I've been playing a little bit on the iPhone as well. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate, which just came to the Switch, and I believe it's on other platforms as well. I've been playing it on the Switch. It's a good fit there, runs very well. It's a very simplistic visual experience. It's not really like the most insanely ambitious Turtles experience out there. It's a roguelike, and it's a top-down multiplayer game, so you can sign up with a bunch of buds and battle as Leo and Michelangelo and 
and Donatello and Raphael and take on hordes and hordes of Foot Clan soldiers and all kinds of mousers and rat bosses and alligator bosses, all the different characters and creations that you've seen across Turtles lore. You will see them again and again and again as you try to get further and further. There are pickups that you can collect along the way that will buff you and enhance you and give you new abilities. And you are just incrementally adding to your skill set and to your familiarity and your ability within the game. And so you're going to see a lot of the same stuff over and over again. And that did start to wear on me, especially because it's not the most beautiful experience. It's not Hades. And it shares some similarity with the idea of Hades. Uh, but that is just so much more elaborate and ornate and detailed. But this is in the Turtles universe, and I'm a big fan of the Turtles, especially in video game form. And I think this is a pretty solid experience, especially if you've got a few friends that you're going to play with. All the characters have their own move sets, and there, there's lots of repartee going out there. It's not the greatest. I certainly don't have the same kind of love for this game as I have for Shredder's Revenge, but this is definitely a worthy addition to any turtle-loving video game fan out there. I think you're going to have a good time with Splintered Fate. I'm also going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. So there you go, five quick hit reviews on games that I've been snacking on on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure you're also following us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash EPN. I'm streaming there all the time, and I streamed, I think, all of these games over there. But thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below or think about any of these games in the comments below. We will see you soon, and until then, play forever.